Plants vs Zombies has been beaten in hundreds of different ways. People have gone as far as making the nuts only challenge, beans only challenge, there's probably been a grass only challenge. Yeah, maybe not. So one day whilst playing Garden Warfare, I suddenly froze. But then I was brutally massacred. However, it made me think of the idea... <laughs> Quickly before we begin, Mr. Beast is telling me that I'm going to reach 25,000 subs in 89 days. Which is like three months. So to help me prove him wrong, make sure you subscribe to support the channel. Heading back to the challenge, here's the rules. We're actually doing this challenge on PvZ2, as in the first game, Dave picks half the plants for you. I can only use plants from the Garden Warfare games. That doesn't include plants' abilities like Chomper's Spikeweed or Cactus's Walnut. No power-ups, no leveling up, other than the mandatory level 2 pea shooter, no other cheating stuff. You get the idea. And every gimmick level where I'm forced to use certain plants might not not be possible, but hell, I'ma try anyway. So without further ado, let's beat Plants vs Zombies 2 with only Garden Warfare plants. Welcome to the tutorial world, where luckily the first plant we have access to in this game is... The first level isn't much to worry about, having our main character Pea Shooter wipe out all these brown coat losers. So once beating the level, we unlocked... The second Garden Warfare character to join the team. Sunflower is going to carry this challenge for us. However, don't think this will be a cakewalk. I don't think you've realized what's in store for these few characters down the line. For now though, Sunflower greatly increases our sun production and allows us to get by level 2 with no problem at all. We get given this nut dude, but he ain't part of the Garden Warfare gang, so... In level 3, I did not place this nut! Cactus did. And once again we breach through the level, with the same going for level 4, rewarding us with... Cabbage base. Such a shame that PopCap chose the corn throwing man over you to get a Garden Warfare character. Oh well. Day 5 unlocks the whole of the lawn, which somehow already has walnuts planted in the dirt. How did you do that? And this cabbage dude decided he wanted to join in on the fun. Yeah, not happening, buddy. Get out of here. We continued the level with our pea shooters, as well as these walnuts who've decided to sacrifice themselves for the greater cause. And once taking out the final conehead, yeah, we still haven't gone against any bucketheads, he fell over and I found hot sauce in his pocket, to which Dave stole it and poured the whole thing on one taco and then ate it. Dave, after consuming said taco, somehow doesn't feel like his ass is about to explode, but actually wants to eat it again. You freak. So after talking to his, um, talking car, he travels back in time, as anyone would do, and- Oh, no! We're in ancient Egypt now. That doesn't smell right. Well, maybe the smell's coming from you eating that hot-ass taco. But after Dave stopped talking about his bowels, we get thrown into day one, being the first level of ancient Egypt. The white knighting walnuts have returned, defending our garden warfare plants. So we went ahead and fought through the horde with only Sunflower and Pea Shooter, until we came across Mr. Sunman, who decides to just steal my hard-earned son. Although, he literally was taken out by this Pea Shooter, so it didn't matter at all. We then went on to the power-up level, with these pre-planted plants I didn't place these guys, in which I tried my hard hardest to hold back the overwhelming amount of zombies, just trying to tempt me into using my snowflake powers or Google Maps. And after making it to the final wave, I had to sacrifice two lawnmowers to beat the level, to which they respawned instantly, so all of that stress was for nothing. Regardless, we received the world map. Wow, look at this cool map. Anyway, level 3 had Penny giving me a few bands, but then this taco-eating headass made me spend a rack on some plant food. Where am I buying this food from, the black market? These early levels are obviously quite a cakewalk. Yet, yeah, Dave over here talking about some, these zombies keep being different. Man, shut your yeah. On day 4, here was our first real issue. Take a look at this conveyor belt real quick. You see the issue? That's right. Why does this plant got dreads? The conveyor belt levels will likely be the downfall of this challenge, with not knowing which plants are coming next, along with if these plants are even in these levels. However, luckily the early levels give me an infinite supply of lawnmowers, because I guess they think I suck at this game. So I beat the level without placing a single plant, and then was forced to upgrade this pea shooter against his own will. Dave reminds me that, hey, look, you can buy upgrades for money. It, it, use your money to buy upgrades. S spend your money. But I just ignored his demand and went on to placing down the Garden Warfare team. Whilst it might not look like it now, the zombie right here will cause serious issues in the near future. 
but not the far future because we're not in that world yet. I want to make iceberg lettuce freeze fire more better, er, Penny. Shut your fat ass up, day. day six, the first boss level in this challenge, which happens to be another conveyor level. And it so happens to be also the first level to not have unlimited mowers anymore. I guess they're taking my trainer wheels away from me. And look, I really wanted to see if I could beat this only using garden warfare plants, but legitimately the only thing that technically counts is Iceberg Lettuce, who was a cancelled character for Battle for Neighborville because the game fell off and died. But even then, the iceberg doesn't show up enough in the conveyor to stall everyone before the mowers can wipe out the board. So as I stated in the beginning of this video, try to ignore these levels that force the plants in my pockets. So we pushed through day 6, day 7, and oh boy, the tutorial messages are finally over, giving us access to the store. And that means... <laughs> That's right, the OG Garden Warfare team has been assembled. So in day eight, we deployed our heroes and let them piece up all the zombies. It's wild to see how the game suddenly becomes a whole lot easier with these two joining the team. However, after moving on from this level, I got hit with an ad. Now, I didn't know that there was just adverts that forced you to watch them with no rewards like gems or coins or this special plant, but half of these adverts are just broken anyway. This guy is just in the void. What are you promoting here, the color black? We went on to beat day 9 like it was nothing, which unlocked this slimy garden hose with eyes. And despite day 10 shoving all these gravestones on my lawn, I just used cactus piercing ability to hit the zombies right through the hier hieroglyphic cuboids. Day 11 had me slightly worried when the talking truck told me you have to bring these plants. Bring these plants. Which made me think, welp, it's over. Again. But as she drove off, we were given not only Sunflower, but Pea Shooter too, let's go. With having access to two of our Garden Warfare plants, we managed to clear out all of the mummies and daddies. In day 12, we had a rough start with a conehead making it halfway down our field. But luckily, Chomper was there to numb. Chomper, I will admit, is relatively strong for these early stages, with even being able to take out this zombie trapped in a our, our, our Sofi asparagus in one bite. Another strange feature I didn't expect was Cactus being able to turn into spikeweed, as approaching zombies would force him into the ground, and kind of just stab them from below. Day 13 had us placing plants next to Dave's mucus collection, and me, being the idiot I am, thought these guys needed protecting, otherwise Dave would show up on my lawn with a shotgun. But it turns out I'm just not allowed to plant on these guys which I didn't understand until way later. Day 14 unlocked the Zen Garden, which had a small depiction of... Dave? Gnome? Nave? Before heading into day 15, we got hit with another advert. What even is this? Pink Snake. Dave then tells us there's a plant call on the banana phone. <laughs> Plants don't have arms. How did they phone you? In an attempt to save these endangered plants, I simply went to go get the shovel and unsurprisingly that didn't work. So we had to instead fight every single zombie, all because Dave couldn't get off his taco eating ass and dig up three flowers. Luckily, we passed the level with flying colors, which can't be said for this advert since there are no colors and I still managed to fail. Day 16 happened so fast that the sunflowers I placed spelled out the letter F for fast. Day 17 told me I'm not allowed to place more than 17 plants. Why? But due to Cactus's dual-wheeled up, down, left, right cheat code looking ass, I resorted to primarily placing him over the course of the whole level. And my present for beating it was... <gasps> An extra plant food slot? Thank you. Funny enough, whilst loading into the next day, this white flower suddenly started to crash out and stretch into pain, transforming himself into a snowflake. Good for you, Snowflake. Dave then tells us we're going up against our first pea shooter level. No, not that pea shooter. I'm talking about this pea shooter, which I beat entirely on this channel. So go watch it if you're really awesome and cool. Unfortunately, without having the ability to combine my plants like in pea shooter, I had to resort to using basic cactuses and pea shooters to fight my way through day 19, 18, 5, where these camel panel built like a wet flannel suffered the most with cactus shooting straight through all of them. At this point, I thought Dave was just messing around with me because day 19 required us to never have more than 16 plants and also look after these green shit all whilst Jack Black from Jumanji sets all my plants on fire. And in my first attempt of this level, this zombie ate through my sunflowers, beelining it straight to these useless pebbles, and I thought it was over. All until I realized these dudes have a thing for being stepped on and didn't mind. But that didn't stop Jack Black from burning down everything and I had to restart. After playing more carefully around Jack Black, 
And by that, I mean just sacrificing everything so he can be run over. We beat the level, rewarding us with repeater. P shooter dose times two. He shoots two times. Unfortunately, Repeater isn't in Garden Warfare, so we moved on to day 20, having to once again protect these goddamn sunflowers. I tried to play more strategically against Jack Black by planting chompers in front of my sunflowers to eat him way before he gets close to burning everything down. And surprisingly, this meta was working. So as Jack Black rebooted to the bottom lane, I placed another chomper and... What? Hey, excuse me. Time out, Mr. Black. How... Does that shit work? So you're telling me this chomper was able to eat this dude, but because the other chomper got a bit carried away with him licking his lips and shit, he gets burnt down. Sure, game, that makes sense. After my tantrum, I attempted to avoid using chomper for the time being, and work towards building a solid defense with my row of cactus. Yet, Jack Black once again returned, with my only plan being able to stop him being chomper. Round two began, and- Oh my god, are you kidding me? His mouth wasn't even closed at this time, was you not hungry or something? You knock off piranha plants? After some trial and error, we made it through the level with Pea Shooter using his Pea Gatling to eviscerate this zombie to dust. Day 21 threw me in with no explanation, having these three random dudes picked for me. So, okay then. But fortunately for us, that means we get to bring along... Whilst we haven't fully unlocked him yet, Colonel Corn is going to greatly help us in this level. With his sun cost being relatively low, we can place him to activate his bigger, better butter ability and free zombies in their tracks. So once the team was built, I paired him up with Cactus and we were unstoppable against Zomboss's zombie army. Farewell, Colonel Corn. <laughs> I'll miss you! Dave must have got bored or just really likes to torture me, as day 22's objectives were literally copy and paste from another one of the levels. But this time round, there was a lot more gravestones. Ooh! To be honest, I completely forgot about the plant limit and just placed everything as normal. However, due to these gravestones, I only placed one row of sunflowers. Despite this sun disadvantage, I managed to place enough cacti and chompi to beat day 22. Day 23 made us go up against our first real gargantua. Ooh, very scary. But activating chompers, um, sucking ability. We were able to pull him in, then push him out, and I'm gonna stop talking now. Day 24, a pea shooter level once again, where I just placed like 50 cacti, but I decided to randomly place these chompers in a pattern in the front row with my remaining son, which actually came in handy as these gold statue dudes fortunately walked in those exact lanes. How thoughtful of you gentlemen. However, with day 24 complete, it was time to take on the final level of ancient Egypt. My taco tastes so close. Shut your fat ass up. The level level began and I just had to pray that some of our garden warfare plants would appear on the conveyor belt. Okay, can't use that one. Okay, I can't use that one. Can't use that one either. Or that one. Ah, uh, no, no, not that one. Nope, not, not him. He got rejected. That's not gonna work. No. Okay, dude, what the fuck? It turns out this game is just racist against the garden warfare plants, so instead I had to beat this level as normal. But hey, look on the bright side. I said look on the bright side. We took down Zomboss like the pathetic loser he is, and he gave up the key to Pirate Seas. But that'll have to be for next time, as there was Ancient Egypt beaten with only Garden Warfare plants. So if you want to see us take on Pirate Seas, make sure you let me know by leaving a comment down below, or otherwise just leave a like on the video, and I'll see you guys next time.